Um, let's transition to the greater percentage of patients that don't have these driver mutations. And uh, Tom, I wanted to just kind of ask you to kind of walk us through the treatment approach uh, in the different histologies in advanced uh, non-small cell lung cancer. So for the patient treated off trial and the non-squamous who are mutation negative, I think there are three commonly used options, uh, carboplatinum, paclitaxel, bevacizumab, and the carbopemetrexid. Some people use the carboplatinum, pemetrexid, and bevacizumab. My bias is generally towards the first two of carbopaclitaxel and bevacizumab or carboplatinum pemetrexid. Um, for the squamous, I think we have currently more limited options, and I've uh, used generally carboplatinum gemcitabine or carboplatinum taxol in the squamous uh, histology patients. Does NAB paclitaxel have a role there? I think it has an increased response rate, but uh, progression-free and overall survival um, are very similar in the phase three trial in the squamous subset analysis. Um, I've not routinely used carboplatinum and nabpaclitaxel off of a clinical trial. So, Anne, does age factor into your decisions about particularly bevacizumab? Yeah, so, so I would say yes, but as the qualifying answer. Mm -hmm. So obviously performance status is gonna be the biggest issue for how we treat our patients. But I do have distinct cutoffs for things like bevacizumab and probably I will for the immunotherapies when they move into uh, prime time as well. So the data on bevacizumab has been that the patients who are over age 75 definitely have a higher risk of complications um, and also toxicities from the bevacizumab. So, um, my usual go-to for non-squames um, would be platinum pemetrexid with or without bevacizumab. And so I usually tend to not give bevacizumab in patients who are over age 75. And that's because of toxicity? Just yeah, because of toxicity. Mm -hmm. there, there's also been controversy, and this is really subject to small subset analysis and stuff like this. There's been a question about the efficacy in the older patient, but I think that may be more of a numbers issue than it is. I think I think that it's really the toxicity that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the fact that you have, the efficacy may be impacted by the fact you often dose reduce, you know, the regimens and patients who are older, um, who are elderly because their renal function and their GFR just right. can't tolerate it. Do you use bevacizumab in PS2 patients? So it depends. If their disease is what's causing their performance status to be poor, mm -hmm. um, then I will, because your goal is to try to bulk reduce the disease. Um, in patients where their performance status is due to comorbidities, then obviously I wouldn't. Okay. And I think, uh, as Tom mentioned, the, the big decision seems to be between carboplatinum, paclitaxel, and BEV versus carboplatinum, pemetrexid. We haven't had any uh, really solid comparative data between those two regimens. And so how do you, do, do, do you feel like those two regimens are equivalent? Or would you say in a BEV eligible patient that based upon point break that you would add BEV in a BEV eligible patient to carboplatinum pemetrexid? Or, or what's the thinking there? So I think we have the pronounced trial that compared carboplatinum paclitaxel and bevacizumab and to carboplatinum pemetrexid. It was a small trial with an unusual endpoint. Very unusual, unusual endpoint. endpoint. Yeah. Uh, but it's the best data we have. I would consider those two equivalent. I think um, sometimes I talk, uh, think about the patient, like Ann said, if they're sort of borderline um, and, and in terms of age or comorbidities, I tilt more towards the carbopem. And I think we have to talk about the toxicities because there are differences in toxicities right. in terms of sensory neuropathy, alopecia, um, right. and taxing um, neuro sensory neuropathy and myalgias, arthritis. So in a, in a patient um, such as this, I'm just interested, I'd like to get the panel's uh, view of how many cycles you give when you're planning to likely do maintenance. So how many cycles would you deliver? I do four cycles of platinum. Babies. Heather? I do four usually. Depends on response. If they're still shrinking after four, I push to six. Uh, pretty much always four. Okay. And so... Uh, uh,